I want to talk about and share the story about this bright tangerine orange 1996 Mustang convertible which is the second car that I had mentioned in my other video with the bright tangerine orange GT coupe and I'm going to uh, tell a story about this car and uh, what experience I had with it and everything but before we get into that um, I want to talk about a couple of other bright tangerine orange coupes that some of my viewers and friends on Instagram had sent me pictures of and told me some stories about those cars and they were so fun that I wanted to include them in this video before we get started with this convertible. My friend on Instagram GTCS1989 had sent me this picture in a private message about when his dad purchased a bright tangerine orange Mustang GT. Now this car is really special because this was a 248A package or the GTS as it's called and the GTS was an option which was like the old LX 5.0 Fox Body Mustangs where it was a bare bones with a V8 you know roll up windows um, non-power door locks no fog lights no rear spoiler just a stripped down GT you got the V8 and you got the 5 speed you got everything that mattered to most car guys in this case and so um, I think that's really cool and he told me that his dad was there looking at a Mr. Cobra and the salesman said well we have something a little special back here that's a little more affordable and that was the uh, 96 bright tangerine orange GT and so he purchased that car and honestly I've never ever heard of another one of those I was surprised when he told me that it was a GTS because I had never heard of a bright tangerine orange GTS car We'll get into the GTS cars a little bit later, um, but they were in 95, and then the 96 um, year model had some. And in 96, there were actually 6,370 made, so that's real interesting to see a bright tangerine orange one of those cars. And after I made the last video about the bright tangerine orange GT Coupe, I had a lot of feedback, a lot of comments, people telling me that they had seen uh, these cars before and knew about them and had some stories. And my other friend on Instagram, Silver2Valve, had sent me these pictures in a private message about one that he saw for sale that had 317,000 miles on it. And you can see in the pictures that this car is pretty hammered. The uh, paint's fading really bad. Um, the rear tail lights sw side swiped and cracked. Um, the, there's some damage here from the side swipe that goes all down the side of the car. And because of this, he said it had a salvage title, the, the guy selling the car in the ad. And it was only listed for like $1,200. So that's a pretty good price for that car. But if you look at the seats, they are black leather, which makes this car one of 51 that had the black leather and the five speed. So that's a pretty cool car right there. Whoever got that car, I hope they restored it and are taking good care of it. Now, like I said, the bright tangerine orange Mustang GT is a really special car to me. This car showed up in the fall. And it always reminds me of the fall time because it's orange, kind of like Halloween, you know, the colors, uh, the fall leaves change and the pumpkins and everything that brings in the autumn colors. I actually used to call this the autumn orange GT with my brother. We'd call it the autumn orange because we thought that that was autumn orange. And we found out later that Ford did make an autumn orange, but it was a metallic orange that looked like laser red. So this was actually called bright tangerine orange. And... This car is special to us. Like I said, the reason that it's a, a fall car is because the old couple who owned this car would come down in the fall to their second home that they had here in town. Around here they call those people snowbirds because they live up north and when the snow starts coming down they vacate down here to their second homes. And so the snowbirds are usually older people and, you know, and older people usually have a little bit more money. They have the nicer cars and things. And in this case, the the owner of this car had uh, purchased this car brand new and, and held on to it for quite some time. So it showed up in my neighborhood growing up, and I would see it parked down at the bottom of the street. And my brother and I would go down, ride our bikes, and go take a look at it and, and realize that it seemed to be a pretty cool car. It was a five-speed. It was... Um, interestingly enough it had white leather seats so here's a picture of those seats and the white dashboard which was insane I remember they would park this 
when they'd come visit neighbors that lived down at the bottom of my street and they'd leave the top down so I could just go walk up to it and look inside and see it and um, it just looked really wild to have a white dashboard like that and I have seen other SN95 Mustangs that had the white very rare um, very rare to see that so this car who knows how rare it is being a convertible with a white top and and uh, white dashboard and white seats so when I talked to this guy who owned the car later down the road I told him that I used to go look at it all the time and um, I told him what street that he used to park it on and he was pretty surprised uh, he had no idea that we were out there looking at it and stuff but he said what do you think I've changed on the interior of this car and I said obviously you changed the inserts on those seats they were never orange like that and so he was really interested when I told him that he could tell I was quite the enthusiast and so he told me some stories about the car and that every time he took it into the Ford dealership for an oil change they offered to buy it from him he told me that he offered to give the car to his son and his son said I don't want anything to do with that car I don't like Mustangs I can't believe somebody would do that I can't, I can't believe anybody would would turn down a free car no matter what it was but anyway it was such a nice car I said well look I'd be interested in owning this car at some point, so um, how about I give you my phone number and you can let me know if you're interested in selling it. And so he gave me a business card that he had that he carried around in his wallet that had his contact information on it. And he said, here, give me a call sometime when I'm home and I'll, I'll get your information and everything like that. So I was out doing some mobile t detailing with my friend and we were waxing some RVs and he showed up at the RV storage place to go check on his RV and there he was in that car and so I went over and talked to him again and he said he had remembered me and we got talking about the car a little bit and he showed me some bumps and bruises the car had it wasn't perfect by any means but it sure was a nice car you could tell that it had always been garaged it'd been taken care of just kinda like uh, you would see some older people enjoying a car you know not racing it or hurting it or anything he told me he had a new clutch put in it and he told me that his wife's leg hurts and that her knee has problems and she can't drive the stick shift anymore and so I said well if you wanna if you wanna sell it to me maybe we can work something out and he said well uh, you're gonna have to ask her because it's her car and so I said okay well I'll call you because I have your business card and uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. And so he was really nice and uh, you know he showed me some more parts on the car that had a couple dings and things on it like that. And um, I went ahead and gave him a call a few days later and he said oh yeah okay and uh, he jotted down my name and my phone number and he said yeah when we're ready to sell the car we'll give you a call. And to be honest, I really wanted the coupe. I wasn't too interested in the convertible, but I did want this car because it was part of my childhood and it was a neat car and he was getting ready to, to get rid of it. And so I was waiting for him to call me when I was going down the road in front of the Ford dealership and there it was on the front row of the dealership for sale. And so obviously I was a little upset that he had gone and traded the car in without talking to me first. He had my phone number, everything, and the dealership was asking almost $8,000 for the car, which I can understand it's rare and all that stuff, but eight grand buys you a pretty good four-valve Mustang these days, like a, you know, a, a Mach 1 that's got some miles on it. So I wasn't going to go down to the Ford dealership and buy that car now. He had lost the opportunity to get it to me for a, a decent price and I know the trade-in value on these is very low so they probably they probably gave him hardly anything for it and then they turned around to sell it and so it sat there for sale uh, for quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people told me that they had seen it there and I said yeah I've seen it there. I saw it there like the first day it was there. Um, and I wanted to go and see what it looked like next to my competition orange. And having the two cars close together, I could notice that the competition orange was a deeper, darker, nicer orange than the bright tangerine. It actually reminded me a lot of the difference between the zinc yellow and the screaming yellow. You can see here the zinc yellow is a little lighter, the screaming yellow is a little darker. But regardless, it's a really cool color. And I really like that one with the white top and the white interior. I think that's going to be a a collectible car in the future. 
I don't think it will bring in big money like the Terminators or the Shelbys or the Bosses or any of those kind of cars. Um, but I think it'll be a car that'll hold value above all the other SN95 Mustangs. So this car did eventually sell. I believe they dropped the price a couple times on it and somebody did go in there and buy it. And I have a friend who has a 05, 06 Mustang GT 3 valve and he was in a place getting his windows tinted and he was talking to a guy there who had another Mustang and that guy had told my friend that he had a few Mustangs and he had purchased this bright tangerine orange GT convertible. Uh, the only thing that makes me upset though about that is he was uh, talking to him about the car and told him that his plans for the car were to change the top to black to put some clear ricer tail lights in it and you know do some other things to it and so I don't like that idea I think that car shouldn't be changed at all especially since the interior is white and everything and it's so rare of course on the internet you always get into these arguments with people and there's those certain people who always say well it's their car they can do what they want with it why are you so mad and you know what I don't care what those people have to say because obviously that's a given that's not going to change it is their car they can do what they want but if they want to light it on fire and burn to the ground of course that's their choice but that doesn't mean they should do that but anyway just wanted to put this video out share the story about this car that meant a lot to me and my brother a car that we would go drool over and look at and wish that we had the dual exhaust and the v8 and all that stuff it was a car that when we heard it drive off even with stock exhaust we would stop and listen to it and watch it until it disappeared. Such a cool car. My friend called it a creamsicle, so I think that's kind of funny. But there's a very rare bright tangerine orange 1996 Mustang. I have no idea how many convertibles they made of them like that, and whether they were white interiors as well. Um, we'll have to see if this car services again here in town. Um, and if you know of one like it, let me know. If you know of any of these bright tangerine orange Mustangs, uh, put it in the comments because I love hearing about it. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the videos, help the channel grow.